It's the Sherry Mouth Lounge, episode number 219, right? Oh, actually, yeah, you are right. That is one thing I forgot. I forgot to change the number. So, I'm going to oh. do that. I'm going to do that live. It's done. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I can do All that right. sort of magic because of how I have the recording set up. Yeah, OBS. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, it's me and Addy again. Pink is still uh, in the process of uh, moving Pink, to Cowboy Land. Yeah, Pink, Pink is in the process of getting down after getting launched by, the, by Mama Death Claw again. Yeah. The thing he, is, he just has to set the time scale real high. That's, that, that, that's, that's what I was going to say. Is that the the different difference between or or New Vegas playthrough and real life is that is that Pink can set the time scale to a thousand, so he's gonna be up there for a while. Yeah, he doesn't have a pit boy either. Yeah. Uh, either which way, Addy, you got anything coming out on your channel this week? Yes, I have. Uh. My review of Sengoku Basara for Sumeragi coming out on my channel. Ooh. And All right. I may also release, uh, I did have, um, or I did record some bits and pieces of, of my playthrough of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And uh, I may re release some clips from that. Because there's one that I really love that I, I will send to you regardless. Where I did um, Yaki Gojin in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And Yaki Gojin. Because you probably don't know the fucking name. I'm, I'm the only nerd who actually learned all of Akuma's moveset by name, more or less. <laughs> but freaking, uh, Diaki Gojin is the demon flipping to kick. You know, the dive kick? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I somehow managed to do that in a certain screen while hollow, and the results were great. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that's. And. Yeah? Yeah, other than that. Yeah, that, that's all that's coming coming out. I managed to make two two reviews this week. Like I managed to managed to produce two reviews. You've been pumping them out lately. Yeah, I mean, I I, I have a weekly uh freaking schedule for make, making them, which may, makes uh adjusting things harder because I don't have time. <laughs> but, and and I have <laughs> no, noticed some issues. Like um, I noticed a while or after I have edited the last one that I made. I noticed that one of the one of the um character cells or whatever that I use for for me. Uh the shading isn't complete. Like there's there's you can see the part where I where I was planning to shade it, but I didn't actually fill it in. And it bother <laughs> it bothers me a bit, but at the same time, making one of those sheets, and I can actually pull it up because I saved saved the sheet this time. Unlike the the fir the other two. But making one of these sheets takes from my experience at least three days. And three days is time that I can't really spare while also working on reviews. Like I would either, yeah. either I would either need to take take a break or make sure that I can, or you know, make make a review in like you know a day or two, if that's even at all possible. And then I would need to. I would, I work. would say take a break. Let me see if I can find it. Fucking hell. Uh, oh well, yeah. I think that I generally think. speaking, if uh. You're not operating with super strict deadlines like, oh my god, they'll kill my uh, fucking dog if I don't get this deadline done right. It's better to take it a little bit slower to make sure you get the work right, I think. With that said, it, like you decide what pace is appropriate for you, you know? Yeah. So I guess I'll put this into, I don't know, I'll put, put this into the text channel that we don't use anymore, really. Yeah. All right, is it actually gonna work? It did. So yeah, when I, whenever I make a make a set a set of um a character art for reviews, I make one of these sheets. Yeah. And like the it, it takes three days because one one day is just the the sketching of all of, of all of these poses and shit. Another day is the light work and the coloring, and another another day is shading. Yeah. And so there's a lot of shit to go wrong. And I'm also just like, I, I'm fine with this. I don't like the, this, uh, this character art, but the, the, it's better than the old ones, <laughs> which is why I ended up using it, because I, I didn't want to wait another like half a year to get better at art so I can actually make a uh, character art that looks good. So... Yeah. Again, that, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm going to wait a couple, yeah? 
Go ahead. N- nothing. I uh, I was not uh, gonna really say anything like worthwhile. I was just gonna say something pithy, you know. All right. But yeah, so I'm basically what I, what I'm trying to do is I'm I'm trying to not pay attention to all of the the fucking issues with the art, and then use this for a bit while I while I get better in the art in the in the background, and then once I feel like I've sufficiently improved, I'm gonna either you know make sure that I have a, I have a, I have enough of a black back, uh, backlog that I can freaking take the, take that week out to just make the the new sheet, or take a break. Yeah. That being said, I am behind schedule because I'm supposed to be like so I, the way I wanted it. I would have four videos uh, up, uh, basically whenever, so so that I don't have to worry about making uh, reviews for a month, more or less. Because <laughs> like, uh, uh, yeah, as as someone who got thirty thousand views on a video and has done pretty well, fucking nothing since. I'll tell you, you're, you can probably take a fairly relaxed view on it, uh, somewhat. Until, until, until you're getting paid to do it, you know? Yeah, but at the same time, like, I, I took a really relaxed view on it, on it, and then that, that's how I didn't upload for four years, so. Yeah. <laughs> that is, but, like, as long as, like, making the videos is fun and you really want to get your voice out there, you know? Yeah. I think that that can be motivation enough. And I, I think also, like, it's just, we're not as busy with the channel, the group channel, as we used to be, you know? I mean, yeah. as, as things have changed with my internet situation, as Pink has gone through his move, as things have changed with what platforms you have access to, like, we can't really do what we used to do, you know? Yeah. So, obviously, this means we need to transition into, into FOS things, like we always plan to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if the funny thing, like, if we wind up having, like, successful solo channels on the side, each of us, and the FOS group channel turns into a podcast channel, like, I would think that'd be pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the way I view it is that my main channel is the one where I actually really try. And then the, the FOS <laughs> channel, the, F, the FOS channel is just basically, like, you know, it, it's, it's an extra. People, people can have a deeper look into my life, I guess. And then also, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's me hanging out with my friends. Yeah. I think, like, on one hand, I think that the content, the overwhelming majority of the content we put out on this channel is impenetrable. But at the same time, I don't want to stop making it. I still want to do the podcast with you guys. I still want to play games with you guys. So might as well throw it up there if we're already playing it and we can safely record it. Yeah. 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 Uh, either which way. Yeah. I. I. I've been uh, really happy to see that you've been coming out with stuff lately. Why is my phone blowing up? It's six in the morning. I. I've been really happy to see that uh, you've been uh, come up with stuff like that again. It. It, it seems like uh, something that uh, you were pretty happy to do a while ago. Obviously, I can't speak for you, but you seem very proud of your work there. Yeah. I. I... I tried. I mean, I, I have hit um, a plateau, which also contributed to me not making videos for four years, because one of the things is that, you know, you, the more you do a thing, you're supposed to improve at it. And once you hit a plateau, it just feels like you're treading, treading the sa- same water. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these people doing, uh, making, rev- or making uh, videos just in general, who started learning how to edit after I, I do. And they have more creativity, and they do better execution and shit like that. And I, I get discouraged, because obviously... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not a race, but, but, you know, it's the competitive nature of, like, you know, why can't I edit freaking whatever visual effects that as well as this, that guy? And the answer is, well, that guy probably doesn't have a fucking PC made for 2005. Yes. <laughs> but, you know. Yes. There's also a fair few of them that, let's be honest here, hired an editor. Yeah, that's another thing. Is that do the whole yeah. thing than to do at least parts of it. Yeah, that, that that's another thing. Yeah, the higher editors thing. Like, I could, I could probably make more creative edits if I wasn't also trying to do everything else regarding production. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I, I enjoy doing production stuff. Like, the the re- that's the, that's the reason that I wanted to go into uh, film school, is because I don't give a fuck about movies, but the I like the I am really interested in knowing how 
movies are made because get it like having the know-how to do all of that work to make make um fiction seem real is a skill that is very interesting to me and so while i don't enjoy movies as a form of entertainment i do find enter i do find entertainment in the in their execution if that somehow makes sense yeah so that, that's that, that's why like i can watch movies and i can i can enjoy them but not not, not necessarily as for, for pieces of fiction i enjoy them as like oh uh, freaking showcases of art more or less the, yeah. the, the art the art of somehow not fucking up this despite 50 million people saying respect- saying different things <laughs> It's more about the artistry than the art. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Like the fucking, like, for example, uh, Infinity War is the last movie I watched, I think. That, that or fucking Aladdin. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> it was Aladdin, wasn't it? COVID. Yeah. But yeah, so freaking, um, in either, either, either of those, like even in Aladdin, which was not a not a great movie, like I I prefer the or, the original animated one. But one thing that I ca- came away from Aladdin enjoying is the editing because the transitions between scenes were very I, not every single scene, but you know when in the transition between key scenes was usually very creative. So you know. Like that's, that's something that most movie co- goers wouldn't really think about because they're they're just like oh well the, the story sucks and the, they like the the actors are not doing their job properly or whatever I don't know I wouldn't know because I watched it dubbed so I can't actually tell how how they acted all that much <laughs> but but you know freaking just like the color grading and then stuff like that which which is shit that I have no fucking clue about and which is why I wanted to go into film school and then got rejected but you know because <laughs> I don't watch movies. <laughs> that's also probably why I like um older movies more because older movies are more like I guess like I wanted to call them rudimentary, but no, that I guess rustic is a better word. In that, like yeah, they're 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 de- like they're they're slept together, but that's kind of kind that kind of makes them um more interesting because they are slept together together and yet still work. Yeah, like I I saw um recently um. A practical effects from like fifty something. It was a black and white movie still, so it was, you know, old. And um, they were showcasing the practical effects, where um, the the actor goes from you know looking normal to looking uh, monstrous, like they have makeup on and shit, without any difference. And what what they did, it was probably just like a black light or whatever, being being shine on the actor, but the. The effect that it it made made on the on the actual film was very like you know because of probably the low grade of um or or whatever you know the low quality of um old film compared to new film, and by, by that I mean the actual media, not the um not the movies themselves like the actual media of film probably having having been uh, of lesser quality than than they uh, improved upon like by the eighties. Probably contributed to to how to selling that that look, but still, like shit like that is a perfect storm, where you need you need things to be shitty enough, but good good enough that you can work around. I I would say well, it's it's art from adversity, which I would say is motivation, and generally trying not to create laziness through having ease. But I mean, I've never been of the belief that all good art comes from adversity because they're. There are some crazy people who believe all good art comes from adversity. I don't, I don't believe in that. There are all kinds of guys who like had cushy lives, happy families, no real uh, mental issues of any kind, and yet they still wrote good stories, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 there are all kinds yeah. of stories you read of guys with fucked up issues, leaving fuck, leading, leading fucked up lives with you know fucked up goings on around them, and then the story they make just kind of craps out, you know? Yeah, like in my opinion, making art from adversity adversity is easier, and that's pretty much it. Like the quality, it doesn't doesn't really um change change the the quality, but it 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 depends on 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 the sort of adversity because it's easier to create art from personal issues or whatever because then then you have um something something to you know put out there. 
it isn't it isn't as easy to create art from you know not having not having a great camera or whatever but you can still you can still work with that because then you go okay so say i have a camera from uh 1950 something i i can buy film for it still which which somehow that is is actually true you, you can still buy uh, film for for very old cameras I can... Some uh, directors insist on still filming on old cameras. Uh, Quentin Tarantino likes to film a lot of his movies still on old cameras. Ah, that's nice. But yeah, like you, you can you can take take the fact that you you know I don't know you find you find your grandpa's inheritance camera that that was like you know um user or you know like personal grade ca camera from like thirty something. Do you buy film for it, which may 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 still be made. Who knows. And then, uh, and then you can shoot an old timey, the freaking like horror movie, that that call call calls on the the old horror movies of the of the thirties and shit. And that's an aesthetic style. Yeah. Like it, it's, you know, in in ways it's it's harder and it in way it ways it's uh easier to make art from adversity because if if there's like it, once again, adversity can create a driving force to to. Make I to make ideas happen at the same time. It can also stop ideas depending on, on which, which ideas you're trying to to freaking follow. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So where where the fuck was I really with produ production of, of my videos? Huh? Yeah, yeah, freaking. It's, funnily enough, I I made two reviews this week. Well, you saw one of them. And then, uh, freaking yeah. the other one I made in two days. <laughs> yeah. I... It, no, actually, te technically three, I think. Because on Tuesday, we recorded Fighting Games R. On Wednesday, I want to say, I played through the game, the entire game. <laughs> and then <laughs> on Thursday, I wrote the script and recorded, recorded the audio. And yesterday, I ed edited it. So, yeah. And uh, one thing that I did actually want to talk about regarding um, performance, I suppose, in, in videos and just overall uh, spe speaking in front of a crowd, that I heard, heard um, Adam Savage discuss, which is how I know that this is apparently a thing. But um, apparently, whenever people speak to a crowd, which technically these videos are... More or less that, like you know, I'm I'm speaking to a wall. Well, no, technically I'm speaking to my monitor, but you know, I'm not yeah. I'm not really thinking of the monitor while I'm speaking. Yeah. And so when when you're speaking to a crowd, people have this internalized uh, crowd that they're speaking to. Like they're not all they're not really speaking to the people um who are there. Like they may adjust some parts of how they speak to better fit the um the actual crowd that is, that is physically present. But they usually don't they don't have a crowd in the end, or they they usually uh, don't pay that much attention to the crowd that that actually is um receiving the thing, and they they pay pay more attention to that internal internalized crowd. And one of the things with um with speaking in front of people is realizing who or what that crowd is that you're talking to. Like uh, the person who came up with this idea, if I remember correctly, they realized that they are writing their books for their sister. Like they, they were writing the books so that their sister could understand, and that's how they, they developed their writing style. Okay. And so for some, so for some people, uh, which seems to be um, more of a thing with, uh, with people who do YouTube, some, for some people, this internalized crowd is not really a specific person, but uh, an abstract idea of the crowd that they think will watch the video, which you know, makes sense. And it works for some yeah. people. And th that's also what I was doing. But uh, after you watched the last video and said, said uh, well, basically, after you watched the last, last video and we talked about how I'd speak too, too fast, I tried to, uh, to slow myself down. And the way I may have done it is that instead of just trying, trying to speak to a, uh, an abstract crowd, since since I said said that I want to make the videos so they see seem like I'm talking to you guys, I just you know thought, thought of being on the podcast, and it may yeah. have worked. I don't know if it if it works, then it works. I mean, yeah. especially like if like it gets you closer to the product you want to make, 
then like it sounds it sounds like it, if it works it works yeah I, i'm too sleepy to put words in front of the other but you understand what i'm saying yeah yeah um the the funny part part is that because of that uh instead of really reading the script like i, I did still read the script properly for the most part but i left in a couple a couple of uh bad takes because they were they were just overall like they um weren't bad, bad enough to not convey the the actual or to not have actually have the actual line the, the the delivery was the thing that sometimes was bad i suppose but with some of them it, it gave it a sort of charm that made me leave it in uh instead of instead of the fixed stick because the fixed stick was a lot more sterile yes and that's in that's that an is... interesting thing to me Yes, that is. Uh, that's also kind of a thing in acting. Sometimes they like to leave in the dirtier takes. Uh, the weirdest thing I ever heard of for uh, dirty, like del uh, deliberate dirty lines, dirty reads of lines, and not in the sexual sense, is uh, the Coen Brothers. In a lot of their films, like to deliberately have slurred words and fucked up lines and so on. The most famous of which being in Fargo. There's a line where one gangster says to another. Like, let me, let me, I can pull up the exact quote, but it wouldn't really matter. Basically, he says, uh, like, we go pancake house. And they actually wrote it in the script as we go pancake house. And the actor went up to him at first and said, hey, you got a typo here. It should be like, we go to the, we go into the pancake house. And the director said, no, you say, we go pancake house. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But my thing is weird, weirdly enough, like the the way I mess up, usually, is either um just not not being able to like. Do you ever do that thing where you read something out loud and and uh you start to say or you try to start to you try to um pronounce a word, but you can't. Like it, it's not. I'm not even saying that, that uh you you mess up the pronunciation. You start you pronounce the word like half of the word properly, and then you can't say the the rest of the word, and you need to start over. Because that, that's that's one of my. I, I yeah. can't say I recall having an incident of that, but like I said, I am rather sleepy right now, so my memory is uh, not too great. Yeah, that that seems to be one of my big, bigger 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 issues, and also randomly adding A's into words where where they don't ex don't exist, like I'm fucking Italian. <laughs> like like <laughs> you know, so sometimes it sounds like I'm trying to make fun of, make fun of Italian Americans, but I'm really not. It's it's just it just happens for some reason. <laughs> Uh, it's certainly an experience, but yeah. So, so yeah, that that's everything to do with my channel this week. How about yours? I'm not planning on doing anything. I expect that, well, technically speaking, this should be the. Uh, I believe I should get part of the week off for spring break. However, I do not expect that most of my classes will respect that, and regardless of whether they do, I should probably spend the uh, extra time that I do this week on working on the 30,000 word paper. I won't be so unrealistic to say as I say that I won't have any free time whatsoever, but I will probably spend that free time relaxing from the work of doing schoolwork. Yeah. So I did put out a I did put out a channel update of the month for March, which pretty well was saying, yeah, hey, don't expect anything for the next month. I'm gonna be pretty fucking busy. But <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But I also clarified that I do have a lot of uh, prospective ideas in the old bank, which I guess I could repeat a couple of those ideas here, which are for one thing, I do want to do more videos with Total War Warhammer, of course, just a variety of different options there. And also, there are two uh, games that I bought fairly recently. Halo Master Chief Collection and Disco Elysium, the final cut. Halo Master Chief Collection, I have played through, like, the first half of Halo 1. I've played through bits of Halo Reach, but other than that, I have not played the Halo series. So doing LPs of that could be fun. Bit long form, though, which is not necessarily what I really want to do with my channel. But hey, if, I, if it fills for time while I decide on doing something else, I guess... Disco Elysium, I think, has a lot more potential to just be wacky and fun 
it is very politics heavy, but I ultimately don't give a shit because I mean, no matter what, like people can always go over to the next video on my channel and they'll probably hear Mike saying something. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't give a shit. If the, the game talks about politics, I'll talk about politics. I don't care. Uh, either yeah. which way, yeah, that, that's just all stuff I was uh, thinking about doing. I mean, you, 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 can, you, you, you can, oh, you can, film, you, you can, you can film, you can film, film a cow tipping video just as a chaos marine. And then hopefully that's Total Warhammer 3, even though they're, they're not even fucking Total Warhammer. I I do not understand what you are saying at all. I'm, say, I'm saying you need, you need to put your cows just as a Chaos Marine and record it. Well, why though? It's content. I, uh, does this somehow lead to me going to the Japanese Suicide Forest as a Chaos Marine? Not yet. Not yet, okay. <laughs> well, at least not yet. Uh, at least it can be put off. Alright, what's coming out on the group channel? So on the group channel, she, the, the rally, rally's drying up. So we don't have anything on Monday. Uh, we have, on uh, Tuesday, we have, the, we have part 3 of Gartic Phone, which I'm surprised got 12 minutes of runtime. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> And then we Avatar have... Avatar phone's always fun. Yeah. Whoa. And then... On Friday, we have part 5 of Hitman 2. And that's it. Alright, give me just a second. I have to unplug and replug my HDMI. Alright, you do that. So, viewer... If you exist... Uh... Okay, there we go. All right. I'm not for certain why. I think I mentioned this before, but the HDMI port on the back of my graphics card is starting to get a little wiggly. I may have to go in there and fix it. So sometimes uh, I need to unplug and replug it in. I'm hoping it's just that the port's a little wiggly. It's weird. And anyways, regardless of tech issues, that's another thing for another time. What'd you do with your week, Addy? So, oh, uh, let's see. What did I do? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, I did finish Assassin's Creed Valhalla. All right. And be be before I dive deeper, I I'm trying to open up my email because Ubisoft sent me a sent me a, a, an email telling me how how long it took me. They they sent a congratulatory congratulatory email <laughs> for some reason. It's kind of dumb, honestly. Yeah. So it took me two days, three hours, and fifty eight minutes. To, to beat the, the main story of, uh, of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh, jeez, I bet they see that as bragging. Yeah, probably. This is how much of your time we wasted. <laughs> and the, 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 this was with me, with me turning off all of the RPGs, so it went by faster. But you know. <laughs> so yeah, my thoughts on Valhalla. Um... I do still think it's the best out of the, the RPG Creed trilogy. And the reason for that is because, finally, the game is distinct enough from, from, from the actual Assassin's Creed series that I can just ignore it. I can, I can ignore, ignore the parts of it that are Assassin's Creed. As a video yeah. game, as a video game, if you turn off all of the RPG, it can be fun. And that's good enough for me to say, say that it's alright. And that's my big, big point, but that was my big point of contention with uh, with uh, with Odyssey is that I don't think it's a, it's a, it it is as a game fun. With Valhalla, yeah. I, I am like I'm not the I'm not I'm not really the uh, freaking like gleeful at the idea of of being like yeah this is this is the greatest Silent Creed game. No, it's not really. But as a video game, I did not feel like it was wasting my time twenty four seven. Now the thing is, that is because I turned off all of the RPG parts. From what I understand, the grind is worse if if you actually try to play the ah. game the way it was designed. Ah. But just by the just by the mere fact that you can you get you get the option to turn it off, to me, me makes it better than other other C because in other C you have to do the grind. There is no choice. There's only grind. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That um, the DLC for it, my uh, my mom wanted to wanted, wanted us to buy a Assassin's Creed Valhalla because it it, it, it was on, on sale, the, as you know, and I was like, no, it's it, it's way too expensive for for that price. Yeah. <laughs> but 
uh they uh they are releasing the, the dlc it just sounds like the most uninteresting shit ever because the dlc or well, the one that they're releasing now the big story dlc is uh more isu stuff and i don't like um have, oh. you, have you even seen about how they handle the isu stuff anymore oh god i don't want to but here's the thing in the old games Juno showed up and talked shit for fun, for twenty minutes at the end of it at the end of Assassin's Creed Three, and that was way too much. It should have been cut, been cut short by like nineteen minutes. But you know, freaking like, you know, those those parts were annoying. But yeah, that, that's about it. Those were those parts were annoying. In these games, in uh in Odyssey and Valhalla specifically, there's entire like tens of hours if not more, of gameplay segments dedicated to being in an Isu city and doing shit with the gods. Ew. The Fate of Atlantis DLC was just going through um, different realms in Greek mythology and speaking with the gods and working with the gods who, have, who, are, who were all Isu. And in this game, you don't even have to pay, pay the DLC for it. Because it's just already in the game. You you drink you drink your funny funny drug juice, and then you go you go into Asgard, and you're Odin, and you do stuff I, there. I, uh, okay. And I skipped and and I, I I put put off interacting with this part of the game for as long as I could. I literally only did it so I would not be under under levels for the for the the last mission, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> Because I don't give a fuck. Like I just I I'm fine with some of the the, the modern parts of Assassin's Creed because I think that like I think uh, Assassin's Creed as a series overall does need a thing to tie tie the games together aside from you know just random people being assassins. And the modern day segments can help with that, but not the alien shit. That's the part I fucking hate. Yeah. Like like the, if if I if I if you want me to point out my big issues. With the modern parts of Assassin's Creed, it's ancient aliens and Desmond Miles. And Desmond is dead, so he's not a, he's not really an issue anymore now. Is he? <laughs> Funny thing, Desmond comes back. He's alive. Well, not alive. He's um in Revelations. You meet you meet um Clay, who was uh, suspect sixteen, and Clay is locked in the Animus. Like his his psyche is in the Animus, but he's he's dead. Desmond. Yeah. Desmond became one with the Animus, I guess, in a similar way, in that he, his, he put his psyche in the Animus, and then he uploaded himself to the internet. So now he's in all of the anime, I guess. Yeah. And so Assassin's Creed Valhalla's ending, which I guess spoilers for Assassin's Creed Valhalla's ending, is the antagonist, who is Loki, just straight up Loki, actual fucking Loki. Uh, yeah. tr- tricks the new protagonist Leila Hassan into going into the into into his Asia ancient Viking animus, which is a thing that existed because ancient aliens, you see. And Ow. yeah. So so she she goes into the ancient ancient Viking animus. And then Loki tricks tricks her into getting stuck there more or less. Like she could leave, but she chooses not not to because why not? I guess people didn't like her. I, I didn't for one, but you know <laughs> Still, that's a that's a that's a weird way to to write off a character because Desmond Desmond killed himself to save the world. Layla killed herself for some reason, technically to save <laughs> like technically to save the world, I guess, but not really. Because like what's happening is um apparently the thing um the the what did they call it? I want to I don't want to call, want to call it a supernova, but it's it's something like it's um the the sun is. Expelling freaking fart gas radiation, and that's going to re- destroy humanity, and that's what Desmond stopped in 2012 by killing himself. Yeah, and the the, the story of Leila Hassan is I am Desmond Miles but female. So, nah. but no, I am Desmond Miles but female, and also actively killed my best friend instead of instead of being vis- visibly controlled by Juno. <laughs> <laughs> Because like the so different the cycle is just repeating is what they're doing. Yeah, the cycle is repeating, but but the, but the different difference between between Desmond and Layla 
is that in Desmond's case, Desmond was pleading with Juno to, to stop controlling him so he wouldn't kill Lucy. With, with Layla, Alicia was pleading with, with, with her to let go of the fucking scepter or she will kill her friend. And she didn't yeah. and killed her friend. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, it's a, it, it does make her seem more in the wrong, in my opinion, than Desmond. Because Desmond, Desmond was literally forced into killing, killing her best friend. Technically, Layla, Layla was forced into killing her best Did I say whatever? Layla was forced into killing her best friend in, in the way that the, 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 the freaking scepter forced her to, I guess. Like, it, it made her um, go psychotic. But even the per like even even the fucking Isu looked into the scepter, was telling her to let go of it so she wouldn't kill kill her, and she didn't listen. So it, I think she's she's in the wrong, <laughs> is what I'm what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, so she goes into the Viking animus, and then she just decides to not leave, even though she could. Like she she would probably die anyway, cause the Loki Loki. Is is, uh, is is you know Loki, and also has a hidden blade on him, and like you know, can, can like no knows how to fight. Whereas Layla has a jacket. Meh. She did bring in the 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 scepter or whatever the Lord, Lord of uh, if, is it no it's not the Lord of, Lord of Asclepius that was in the DLC. It's the oh yeah it's the the, the, the something or other of Hermes Tris Megusta, something like that. That that gives her. It makes me a three mortal. <laughs> Trismagusta, I see. Yeah. I see. <laughs> Anyways, carry on. That's that's how I call that, that, there is an actual name for that thing that's similar, but that's how I called it because because we gusta. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh freaking Uh, long, long story short, Loki was supposed to die, it just, as we'd imagine, but didn't because of, of Viking Animus. And because uh, Layla brought, brought the, the Rod of Hermes Tris Magusta, which makes people immortal, and then let it go while getting into the Viking Animus, Loki, can, Loki has it and it, it is now immortal. I see. Yeah. Not mean good for him, actually. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, freaking Layla. Decides to kill, to literally let herself die of radiation outside of the animus, and just stays with Desmond, so they they can try to figure out how to stop stop radiation from happening anymore. Uh, uh, a plot which they'll finish in the next game. And no, make up a plot that. No, the, a plot with which they will finish in the comics. Get your Assassin's Creed lore right. Oh, now it makes sense. Yes. Did they at least did they bring Nolan North back to voice Desmond again? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, he does. He does have. He has a whole, whole new lines. Like he, they um, there's recordings from 2012 that were um, because Sean and Rebecca are back. That's the only good part of the modern day. Sean and Rebecca, Rebecca are back. They are pretty much the only two characters that make me want the modern day. <laughs> nah. Sean, Sean Hastings is a godsend of a character for Assassin's Creed lore because. He's, he ties into the database, so there's a reason to read the database aside from, you know, I want to read about this fucking building in ancient Italy. It's, I want to read about this building in ancient Italy. Also, what Sean thinks of it, because he will, he will oftentimes write his opinions in, and it's funny. Like, there's, um, yeah. in Unity, you get, um, you get a database entry for Les Miserables, which didn't happen, and it won't, wouldn't happen for a, for a while. And that's, that's exactly why they put it in the game, because, because they just put in a thing of Sean complaining about people, people wanting Les Miserables in the, in the French Revolution. It wasn't timely for, for when the game is set. Ah. Like, that's the sort of stuff that I, I liked about the database, of, of, you know, I can spend some time learning some, some history that I, would need, I, I need to take with a grain of salt and then, then reread on Wikipedia. But still, so I, I can re learn some history and then also have Sean get, get some character development. Even even technically off screen, which is why I was so so sad when they when they um re removed the database and also Sean and Rebecca from the games. Yeah, yeah. Because the modern day without them sucks. Because there is like at, at at this point there is no reason for the story to continue in the, in the modern day. Like Desmond's dead, the world has been technically been been saved. I mean, I I suppose now it's not, but still, well, the yeah. world has been saved. If the if the only two recur recurring characters are the not world dead, world is saved until the sequels. 
yeah. So yeah, all all of that stuff. Um, what what else did I really want to point point at? Um, let's see. I don't know that that may honestly be it. I find it I find it to be enjoyable, not necessarily a great Assassin's Creed game, but considering the amount of fan service it gives to the series, you know, at least comparatively to its predecessors, I'm more content with Valhalla than I than I am the other two in the RPG trilogy. Yeah. And as for the the future of the series, well, next we have Rift, which is going to be or which was supposed to be a DLC for. Uh, Valhalla that's gonna be made into a separate game because it, it grew too big. It follows Loki. Loki is your playable character. Uh. Because the thing is, after Layla dies, Loki becomes the playable character in the modern day of Valhalla. Uh, okay. Yeah. They, for whatever reason, Ubisoft seems really insistent on making you play as the antagonists right now. Because Loki becomes the playable character once Lay Layla is out of the picture. And then in, in the... The new DLC and in uh, in parts of the the game, or you know, in the parts where you're not Eivor, you control Odin, who is also an, an, an antagonist. And isn't the newest Far Cry about playing as Voss? Maybe. Something like that. Maybe. Huh. I don't know. The yeah, they, they just really have a hard one for villains, I guess, right now. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But yeah, so in Rift you will control Loki in uh in his quest to do to do something. I don't I don't like we don't know much, really. <laughs> and then after that we have Infinity, which is gonna be a game on service and probably the death of the series. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. The death of the series. Assassin's Creed needs to rest. Like, well no. Assassin's Creed needs to rest. Uh, also, video games. Is Assassin's Creed needs to be sold to, to sold to another company as an IP. <laughs> it, it needs to be salvaged. Good luck with that. I can't see Ubisoft really suffering enough in business that they're like, "Oh, we gotta sell off Assassin's Creed." Well, no, they 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 don't want to sell off Assassin's Creed uh, as, as, as its own thing, but they are looking looking to get bought out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I'm all I'm saying is I'm hoping that Sony buys them instead of Tencent. Or, or 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 at least Microsoft instead of Tencent, because I can see well, I, anything would be better than Tencent. Yeah, that's true. But like you know, like I, I want them, I want them to go to Microsoft or Sony just because Microsoft could actually, you know, like it, Microsoft se seems like they they wouldn't um peddle as, mu as much against the service stuff stuff as Ubisoft wants to right now. And Sony, I don't expect anything good out of Sony. I'm I'm just hoping that if they buy Ubisoft, then they they will ice the ice the series and just make boot references references to Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm I'm content with that. <laughs> so yeah, that that's Assassin's Creed. Um, let's see what else. Is it technically I suppose imp uh, important uh, channel stuff is um if I can find it. Is I wanted, if you remember, I wanted to refresh um or visual style every hundred episodes or every hundred podcasts rather, which didn't happen yet for for now, but I did uh did, did me a couple of um ideas for avatars, but at least if not for the podcast logo. All right. So, I'm gonna put this into logos because that that's how it makes sense. And I didn't know if you wanted to make a, a text-based one or another one, one that's more like pictures. So after um, what you said, I think last week, I took your, uh, I took the, the the avatar I drew you as a basis, and basically came up with this for a picture-based one. Yeah. The the middle part. I like it a lot, but for whatever reason, the FOS logo in the center kind of looks to me like pizza. <laughs> a pizza dough or something. Yeah, that's like, the thing. The that's colors. the thing. The, the middle part. The middle part is not finished. Like the the corners are done. The the one ones we're in are done. But the middle div divider, I couldn't come up with anything for it. So I just put in a placeholder, and I was hoping that that you that you or Pink could come up with something something for me to put there properly. Yeah. 
And then if you want to go with a more text-based one, then th this logo came by came, uh, came to be by me literally just scribbling about. And then I, I did, did this thing, and then I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to refine it. It's the logo. Like, if, 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 if y'all like it, it's the logo. <laughs> so, I made a version of it in white and a one, one colored one, because, yeah. Colored one. And then we also, and then, and I also have the neon versions because Did that come through. Whatever, the, the only colored one. I hang on. Did that come through? I said I really liked the colored one, but did Discord ignore me? Oh uh, no, I heard colored one. I didn't. I didn't hear the, the little, little like, but yeah, I already heard it the second time. All right, I, I've been having that problem a lot with Discord lately. Discord's uh, sound. Discord's uh, background noise muffling system often assumes I am background noise. Ah. But, by the way, this is inevitably something we would have to wait until Pink comes back. But I did notice, like, when looking up at that uh, logo, I've got the skull, you've got the lightning bolt. Poor Pink doesn't have a logo. Pink has a logo. What is it? The N is a fishing pole. Oh, oh, I see. That makes sense. Yeah, I've, the, yeah, my idea with the logos was I trying... I noticed something was yeah. up there, but I was like, what's going on with that? Oh. Yeah, my, my idea was to incorporate um, incorporate the logo into all of our names somehow, because I, I made the X, the X, the I, O, I of the school. The uh, the uh, the lightning is, is the accent on the on the I, in my name. And then for pink, I was like, well, the well, uh, if you can look like on N. Yeah, works now, I, now that I understand it, yeah. Yeah, the, the thing uh, I don't know if you can see because uh, you need to you may need to zoom in. But I did also make the the colored backgrounds tex textured differently for all of us. Yeah, yeah, I, I made yours blood because I was like, yeah, I couldn't really think of anything else. <laughs> uh, mine is. Um, Are you sure you didn't get the blood? Yes, yeah, mine is mine is devil light is what they call it, and then I made. I made pink some. Huh. I I made pink's sparkles. Sparkles. Yeah. Yeah. I I I can make that out. Yeah. But yeah, for the colored and one. The effect's yeah. subtle, so from a distance, it doesn't quite. It's not so noticeable. But when you get close, it's very noticeable. I like that. Yeah. That's how I want it to be. So it's it's nice to hear that I actually executed it right. Yeah. But, but yeah, so I I don't know which one we we actually want to use. Was the avatar, and and obviously we need to wait for Pink to vote. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, which one do you like best? I guess because there there is a I I did put up both the the neon and the normal versions for the, the both the colored and the white one, or a text one as well as the the picture one. Well, I mean, Pink should have a say when he gets here, but I like both the colored versions between the, uh, m guess kind of more matte. Uh, color version, the neon color version. I can't say which I prefer. All right. Well, if nothing else, like thing is, um, if we if we like both the the text based one and the, um, and and the actual picture one, I can just put the text based one on the picture one once we figure out what what to make the middle, <laughs> really. Yeah. Like like I did with this one. Yeah. And then what else did I do? I feel like I drew something, but I don't. I don't remember. I may not have. I may not have had the time. Maybe what with freaking making two videos this week. Yeah, I was about to say you made a lot of shit this week. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did did think about uh freaking uh making my avatar the the avatar I use on Discord now. Because I actually really like how this one turned out, and I, I don't really plan, plan on making a new one anytime soon, so yeah, whatever. And it's also, YouTube also made it easier to switch out avatars in case I do like, make, make one that I like better. The issue is that the, the way I have this avatar, um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a full uh, background, and it looks bad on YouTube because you need an actual solid background for big pictures. Like, you, need, you need pictures to have a solid background, which, which mine doesn't. So... For a bit, I did, did did consider just making just dripping off the fucking the um the smite uh they take on the the ace flag and just putting that in there. Not because I part I'm particularly fucking you know militant about about being asexual, but like I couldn't I can't fucking come up with anything and and just it being a solid color looks bad. 
Yeah. So yeah, I'm still gonna have to decide decide what to do with that. Actually, make make it work. And uh, hmm. let's see. I'm I'm going through what everything just to make sure that I didn't didn't do anything else. Let's see. But I suppose that the the last part for my week is um is the bad part. <laughs> so I guess I guess skip like twenty minutes. But you too, Alex. <laughs> Just turn turn off for twenty minutes while I while I talk. <laughs> Just go go to sleep. It's it's fine. I'll wake you up. Uh, so my my birthday is coming up, and uh my. Mother wants us to go go somewhere. It's, the thing is, I don't have interests. I just in general, I don't really have interests, <laughs> especially not not things that are local. And then she 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 told me that if um if I if I don't choose something, then she then we'll just go go to sex shops. I was really I was really tempted to freaking be be like okay, but if if we find a freaking uh big dragon dildo, what we're, we're buying it and putting it on display. You should not have said that. I didn't. I was tempted, okay. but I didn't. <laughs> okay, I was about to say that's mistakes. Yeah, the the, the the thing is with with how my family is freaking it, like if we would. And I would laugh at it, but you know, we would. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's it, it is a it is a weird weird thing with with this whole whole thing. How that is the that is the one thing that they don't seem to understand for whatever reason, <laughs> like me, me being ace. And well, I think it's something yeah. that probably worries them a fair bit. I mean, may, maybe, but then like. You know, there's, it's different to to be like, okay, um, how do I say this? Like, there's a way to convey convey being worried about it, and it doesn't feel like feel like they're doing a good job of a good job of that if that that's going what's going on because, you know, just telling me that that I'm too young to know, too pure, pure or whatever. Like, you know, so, somehow I'm too pure to know you know if I if I feel sexual attraction towards another person. But I'm not too pure to to freaking know all of the um like I, I, I'm not too pure to know ran, random sex toys, I guess is is the best way to put it. Cause it's like, oh uh, freaking, uh like so, sometimes it, this happens where um Facebook suggests something to my sister or whatever. And they just bring it to me to tell tell them what it is because we, none of us can figure it out. Yeah, I mean that that does I guess kind of turn out to be the internet person job in the family sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And th things like that, and you know it's it 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 it, 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 it does have this this funny um. I forget. I'm forgetting the word. There is a specific word I wanted to use, but shit, it, it does uh, make this funny um, setup. I says, I, I guess, I sauce, and I I host this as well. No, <laughs> but yeah, it, it does make this funny this funny setup. I guess where even though my dad is the only one I didn't come out to yet, because I don't, I don't think he'd understand. Like he he has a he doesn't understand. Like he he doesn't understand and, and minimizes th things like depression and, and anxiety. You know the like the, the disorder is not just feeding those things. Yeah. So so I don't I don't I don't want to freaking like and, and th that's not because he doesn't care. That's because he has a hard time um like grasping the the idea the abstract idea ideas of why these would happen and how how these function. Like it's not a it's not his fault. Per, per se, like you know, it's 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 a shame, but you know, whatever. But funnily enough, out of my whole family, he's he even though he doesn't know I'm ace properly, he's the one who who's been most accepting of it. How <laughs> <laughs> so? Well, when, whenever um, just throughout my life, really, whenever my uh, my uh, my mother or my sisters 
who would be like let's let's try to figure out your type you know let's let's look at let's look at look at women so you're, you you don't look like look like look like a fucking weirdo and i would be like i don't really i don't really feel feel like freaking doing this or whatever i would go along with it for like 10 minutes and i'd, I'd be like i'm bored can i leave <laughs> like he 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 he'd, he'd always be like just let the kid go yeah and stuff like that so you know There's also um, like the thing that I I've also um went went deeper into tr trying to freaking understand this whole asexuality thing because like you know that, that's our thing. This shit is pretty complex and like you know if my dad can't com properly com comprehend things like how depression function, I wouldn't want to fucking be be like hey here's the here's this thing. Also, even though I'm I'm affected, I don't fucking understand what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it's it, it yeah, but so. Uh, what I've realized is that if shit seems seems to be the way it is, I'm pretty pretty screwed with my with how I am. <laughs> but here's the thing. Apparently, um, because I've read um I've read people people um who have asked um or what how do I say this? So I've read posts where people ask their um their straight or you know just normal. I guess this is a way to put it. Um, I was like, okay, it, that came off wrong. So I'm, I'm using straight, or I use straight, because it's straight is straight is the majority. I use normal because I don't like the the word that I don't like the word that people that um, I guess asexuals may have made up for people who feel sexual attraction, because it's it's a needless label, <laughs> in my opinion. But yeah, so anyway. They have asked their uh, their normal um like a uh, family members to explain uh the they, they explain the different different sorts of uh, attractions to their best ability, which obviously like, nobody can be expe expected to provide an, on a, per a perfect explanation of what what's going on. Yeah, but going off of uh what those those said. I have never felt sexual or romantic attraction. The second one, I mean, you know, I haven't really, really given, given it a chance properly, I don't think, but like, you know, still. And, and as for aesthetic attraction, which is, which is really fucking abstract, and I still don't understand how it works properly, like completely. But <laughs> aesthetic attraction, for me, goes both, like, both ways, but only for furries. Like, I only like anthropomorphic animals when it comes to aesthetics, even. Which is weird. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's been a thing. There was also there was one thing that I wanted to point out here, and I'm fucking forgetting what it is. I don't really want want to fucking get stuck on this topic because I I know you're you you don't really like <laughs> you're here because I force you to be here more or less for these topics. <laughs> uh. That's not accurate. I can leave any time I please. That is, that is true. But it, to me, it feels like that. But <laughs> and he left. All right. <laughs> but yeah, so... <laughs> As I was seeing while, while you left, it, it, it feels like that to me sometimes. But yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the, I guess... Okay, how... Hmm. So there is um there is a simile that I read about uh, about explaining asexuals. Cause I don't, I don't know if I ex actually explained it well well enough for it to be comprehensible on on video or overall really. Like I I, I say things and then some of them are wrong anyway. <laughs> but you know I say I say say things all over the place and I don't know if they, if you if they're you know easy to follow or not easy to follow but you know like make sense of. But basically, a simile that I, I read that seems to check out more or less regarding, sex, regarding sexuality for asexuals is um, with food. Like people usually make a simile, usually people usually make a simile, simile with food where oh uh, freaking <laughs> asexuality is fucking dumb. <laughs> you know what? Does someone affected? <laughs> Because, yeah. 
because um the the act of having sex is like eating in the simile and sexual attraction is is craving a certain food so you know in a way asexuals are possible of being hungry or you know eating <laughs> they, they are physically capable of eating <laughs> and, all, and are also capable of being hungry but they don't really crave food like specific foods if that makes sense yeah and well, the, the simile works but but it's also like i don't know how much it helps in actually understanding what the fuck <laughs> that's that's on you i guess for, for to decide <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess that that those those are the depressing topics for this week. Oh yeah, I did. Did I not have memes? <laughs> I guess so. We don't, so, so we don't freaking leave on a bad note. Uh, let's see. Did I have memes? Right. My Let's see. Hurt. I didn't. I was going to make a comment on your knees, and then and then I stopped. I I couldn't finish. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I I liked this comic. It was funny. There we go. It's, a, it's in pictures. Ah. <laughs> uh, this is this is me. I I feel like this this is me when I whenever I freaking like okay actually I don't I don't like it's it's not not, not a recurring thing I guess but this was me when I drew that drew that freaking that that picture of Sonic that actually gave like make made y'all uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, I really like the art in that one. I think it's nice. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is what I, this is what I wanted to share, just because it's a it's it, it's a cool piece of artwork. It's not it's not funny, but but I may use it if uh freaking if we ever return return to Sonic Unleashed. <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah, I, I I really like that one. It it it, it the, the art is nice. The the con the concept is really dumb, which I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, they did a good job. So yeah, that's my week. I think. All right. Oh no! I, I don't have. A yeah, whole... I remember. I remember the last thing I did. Shit. So the game that I beat, beat in a day is Sonic. Is Team Sonic Racing? Funnily enough. Huh. That's what? awesome. What? Oh, uh, yeah. I only remember one Sonic Racing game off the top of my head, and it's the, uh, it's All-Stars. But there were three. There was All-Stars, there was All-Stars Racing Transformed, and then there, there was this new one in 2019 in, called Team Sonic Racing, which is a spiritual successor made by the same, same people. Oh. Yeah. So it's yeah, just... This one, yeah. I assume, does, does not feature the Heavy from Team Fortress 2 or Simon Lane from the Augs cast? No. It also it it also doesn't uh, doesn't feature the Shogun from Total War Shogun too. No, but it, but it also doesn't doesn't feature actual race race driver Danica Patrick. Was that her name? Danica? Yeah. I don't remember. But yeah, so yeah, she she was she was my favorite. <laughs> Honestly, like even if they could they wouldn't or couldn't include her because of licensing rights. Considering the the fucking how shitty Sonic's voice work is in is, is in the first chapter of the game. They should have just t taken those takes and g put them on Roger and just put a, put a Roger Craig Smith as the playable character into the game. I would have made him. <laughs> the issue is that they, they, they would have had to, but because of how the game works, they would have had to make, make like three actual real people. Because, um, <laughs> you know, as the name implies, Team Sonic Racing is very team inspired. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, what? 
what, like old Sonic Heroes, or it's like yes. set up into the teams of three? Ah, yes, see. Sonic Heroes is, is, is exactly what was cited as, as the inspiration for the team-based mechanics. And um, it's fine. Like if if you if you claim it on PS Plus, if you still have PS Plus, and then one, then once you have internet, we, we may be able to make a funny video out of it, or like a one-off, I mean. But there's a lot of things with it that are also not great, like Gacha Is Fun. It PS Plus this month. Yes. Okay, yeah, I can do that because I have I have missed both I have missed both January and February for the PS Plus games because I just forgot. Yeah, this this month it's um it's that game it's Ark. And it's Ghost Runner for the PS5, but only the PS5. Huh, alright. Also, so Ghost Runner. Arcs... Of... Yeah. Ark's also kind of bad, but at least it's stupid in an enjoyable way. Yeah, I mean, we, we already tried Ark. Remember, that's the, that's the one where, where the, the building glitched out and I killed y'all because you, you were trying to destroy the house. Yeah. It was not fun. A whole lot. <laughs> What what'd you say about uh what'd you say about you said something about Ghost of Tsushima, didn't you? Yeah, uh you, if you want you can also claim go uh Legends mode as a separate separate and separate thing as well, even though you're or you already own the game. I I I oh I not only do I already own Ghost of uh, Ghost of Tsushima, I also tried Legends mode already and didn't like it. Yeah, like I think I think we like it. I think we could do like that's, that's another one of those things where I think we could do a one off and have have fun for a session. I don't see us play, playing that for a lot, and I I am I'm not playing that alone. <laughs> so yeah, like it, it's way too it's way too much what what I uh what I what I feared the game becoming during development. The only thing that I I hope or I wish I they did is that I wish they would have made um uh, made the Legends exclusive uh, outfits available for Jin. Because, you know, more... I, I... Yeah? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, my, my point is just that more custom customization is more customization. Yeah. But, yeah. So... Team Sonic Racing is fine. But there is one, one thing that it does that really matters. And I, I point it point aside, because this, this is the game that I, I made the review of recently. Uh... Recently, I literally fucking started like was done editing it like four a.m. this uh, four a.m. today. So you know, <laughs> but still. So um, there is one thing that there is one very important thing that that Team Sonic Racing does, which is it brings back Big the Cat. <laughs> he is playable, and the new voice actor does a really good John Saint John impression. Oh so, wow! They didn't even bother to get John St. John back. Yeah. No, no. I think they they tried to get John St. John back, and and he he refused. He was he was like, no, I don't care about the money. I don't want to voice big. Well, see, John will say that for the meme, but a paycheck is a paycheck. That's true. And it's not it's not like John's getting a whole lot of work these days. I mean, I, I kind of wish that they would they they would have hired him. And then just had had one line that that would trigger like trigger um very rarely where he just says I've got balls of steel. There's a hidden secret sunglasses item that if you put it on Big the Cat, he switches to the Duke voice. <laughs> I mean, certainly you can't actually customize the characters only that cars and even that's catch up on, but still. <laughs> Maybe Big the Cat just drives one gigantic pair of sunglasses. Yeah, or or, or since or since Spar is one gigantic steroid bottle. I mean, that would be fun, but you don't you don't start transforming this game anymore, which is sad. Ah, yeah. But the the thing is, his car is a frog, so they could have put sunglasses on the frog, and that could have worked. Oh god. Yeah. Don't worry, Froggy. The pain will be over soon. I I feel like I feel like that game we should like or or at least um freaking I don't, I don't know how how that would work but that that would work best or at all really, but I feel like Pink should see big in action just because one of his lines because all of the characters had speak pretty much non con wow I I nearly said the exact opposite of what I was trying to say <laughs> the, the characters speak pretty much consistently like throughout throughout the the the, the race and. 
biggest line for when, when he goes into a, into a water hazard is just, Water? Let's go fishing! God! Yeah. I, I, like... The other great part of the game is that it has online, like, it, it was designed with online in mind, which is to say that, that it lacks single-player content. <laughs> as most online games do. And the best part of it, of it being so online focused is that the online is dead. <laughs> I tried. I tried to play the game, three or four different times. I tried to try to find a, a match online, and every time I would be hosting a room and nobody would join, and I'm not, like, I didn't even start trying to host a room. Room. I would press quick match, and quick match would be like, okay, I'm searching for a room. Then after a couple of minutes, it would be like, okay, I'm I'm making a room instead. And then I would put into an into, into a room with only me, <laughs> and nobody would join. <laughs> so, I I can't really tell you if the if the in, the net code is good or not, because I don't fucking know. <laughs> I never got to try. <laughs> I tried. Like I'm like I'm pretty sure I did uh, did make a review of uh, All Stars Racing Racing Transformed as well, and I, uh, in that one I probably said, oh well, I didn't try out the online because you know I don't play online. This time I tried, and I still don't know. <laughs> oh, it's great. But yeah. Uh, what else is there really to say, say about the game that, I don't, that, that, that isn't just really retreading the review? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's alright. Like, once again, I think we could have fun, for it, fun, fun with it for a one-off. Or, and, or maybe, maybe a Halloween thing. But... You know, aside from that, it's it's all right. Funnily, funnily, funnily enough, my uh, my niece who is really into Sonic did not like it. <laughs> <laughs> she she didn't like the, ra the racing part. So yeah, she just liked the big the cat part. <laughs> no, she didn't. She didn't even. She didn't even look at big the cat. She she saw Blaze. Like, she doesn't know who Blaze is, but she saw she she saw Blaze and just clicked her immediately. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny that, that those two are, are the, the two cat representations for Sonic. It's dead and big. Uh, Blaze, I don't know why Blaze is... It, it, like, I, don't, I doubt that this is re re technically non-canon, but I don't know why Blaze is here, because she's fucking dead. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, she... The, uh, one of, one of the, the things that happened towards the ending of 06 is Blaze sacrifices herself so Silver can go back in time to help Sonic. Or something like that. I don't remember. Uh... But, but hey. Uh... But hey. You, you know, you, you know what, what, the, what the thing is with her sacrifice? What? It's no use! I see. So anyway, your week. You know what? Yeah, my week. Uh, not a whole lot. Played uh, one or three. Unlocked the other one of the two unlockable characters. Nice. It feels like now that I've actually unlocked the characters, and now I can actually play the game. You nice. Know that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but hey, looking forward to playing more of it when I do get the time. The only other thing I did really that was important this week that was really worth talking about was watch SmackDown just uh, last night. <clears throat> uh, it was a show that felt short, which I guess is a good sign. Though, curiously enough, they started off with like a rapid fire, like backstage interview segment, or like rapid fire segments, I guess, where it kept cutting back and forth between like, you know, close up shot interviews with all kinds of dudes. Like, oh, it's with Ronda Rousey, uh, Sonya Deville, uh, Ricochet, uh, Sami Zayn. And it went for like, it went through like eight different dudes, including tag teams. So I thought that was weird to start off with. They had, I'm actually struggling to remember what they did because they didn't do a whole lot. They did have a... Uh, right, right, yes, okay. There we go, that's what I was trying to remember. So, they had a segment, they cut to the back, and they show that Baron Corbin and Mad Cat Moss are playing poker backstage, right? 
And mm-hmm. Madcap Moss is somehow not in a neck brace, despite the fact that he nearly fucking killed himself taking the wrong bump on an inverted Alabama slam a couple of weeks back. Did you hear about that? No. So Drew went to do the inverted Alabama slam to uh, Moss, and you you know the inver- inverted Alabama slam, yeah, right? Yeah, the, the, one, the one where they land, land on their belly, right? Yeah. Well, obviously, you're supposed to, like, you're supposed to take that bump by sticking your hands out to catch yourself and generally trying not to actually land face first on the mat. Moss, I guess, just mu- muscle memory kicked in, and he tried to s- take that bump the same way you take most bumps in wrestling. On his back? By his head in. Uh. Well, yeah, yeah, he tried to do a front flip. That would actually be kind of awesome. No, he yeah, tucked he, his he head turned, in. He turned, he turned, the, he turned the, he turned the inverted Alabama slam into, into a sunset flip. <laughs> a self sunset flip. Uh, so, fucking Moss, pretty well, like, just f- directly dropped himself on the top of his head on, I think it was either ringside concrete or metal or something. Oh. Which, from, from the beginning, it's like, Whose fucking idea was it to do an inverted Alabama slam on anything other than the mat? But also, the guy don't know how to sell the fucking inverted Alabama slam. Uh, bump the, uh, and he no sold it too, which really makes it great. Oh, because the ref went up and was like, "Holy shit, are you fucking dead?" And Moss went, "No, I'm good." And he just jumps up. It's like, "Oh, you fucking moron!" I understand wanting to make it clear to the ref and not the other wrestler that you didn't get hurt legit. But don't, like, just no-sell it as your way of showing it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, sell it more. Because the fans watched you botch that. So sell it! Take the opportunity to lay down. I, I, fans I feel are a lot like... more willing to forgive you laying down if they just saw you nearly cripple yourself. Yeah. You know, from, from the sounds of it, to, to me, it sound, sounds like he was trying to do, like, a, like he, he was trying to show off with a sell. And that, that that that's what backfired. Like it, it either it either was just freaking um muscle memory kicking kicking in, as you said, or it could be a thing where he want he wanted to have his own like R V D D D T moment, where he just sells it really viscerally. That is true, but that would make him even more of an idiot because why would you stick your head forwards taking the inverted Alabama slam? Like I, because, I don't think there's because, a way because he like. Show off. I don't know. I feel. I feel like if he's dumb enough to not to no sell something that that could have actually crippled him, he may be dumb enough to freaking to, to do to do to do that shit to never cripple himself in the first place. That is true. But if you land on your head the way he did, I couldn't entirely blame him for being just momentarily shook up enough to be like, "Oh, I, I need to make it clear. Uh, I'll just jump up. I need to make it clear. I'm not concussed, but I'm not thinking clearly because I'm concussed." <laughs> Uh, either uh, which way, they had Drew McIntyre come out to the ring and give a speech, and he, yes. Uh, one thing he said, show of hands, everybody raise your hands if you'd rather have your eyes gouged out, gouged out than watch a Corbin match, and everybody in the ring, everybody at ringside, of course, raised their hands, because Corbin's the shits. And then afterwards, Drew McIntyre said, uh, Corbin, I don't care about you, you can go have your fun, go play with yourself. And honestly, like, I was took so off guard by McIntyre saying Corbin could go play with himself that I just, like, started gut laughing as hard as possible and did not hear the rest of what McIntyre said. The rest of this promo promo was was spent by McIntyre citing different, different, uh, freaking, different names for masturbation in a thick Scottish accent. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was neat though that there's a little bit of wordplay there because it's like you can't you can't say jerk off right yeah. it's a PG show and it's Dodie still wants it to ultimately be for the kids but you know when you're cutting back and forth the segments of Corbin backstage playing poker then you can play it off as like well he was talking about cards he wasn't talking about touching himself yeah what what they should have done is they, they, instead instead of Madcat was being there they they should have just had Corbin play solitaire. Yeah, that well, that one might have been laying it on a little bit too thick. Uh, oh, they also built up uh, Pat McAfee versus Vince McMahon for WrestleMania. Uh, is it a Kiss My Ass match? No, it's a Kiss My Austin Theory match. Ah, uh, 
on the mouth. For a while, they've been building up Pat McAfee versus Vince, I guess. And this week, they had Austin Theory come out and say he won't be wrestling Vince. He'll be wrestling him at WrestleMania. Which, on one hand, yes, thank God, Vince won't die in the ring at WrestleMania. On the other hand, it's kind of like, do we not have anything better to do with Austin Theory than having him wrestle a commentator and almost certainly job to a commentator? Vince will run out, run out, run out to interfere. Do a taker dive. <laughs> that, that's it. What, blow his fucking quads again? Yeah. I know what. I, I, I feel like if Vince does a taker dive in, in, in his state, he'll blow out all of his joints simultaneously. That is true. The quads are not a joint, though. They're a muscle. True. But either which way, yeah, they did that. And uh, let's see, moving on down the card. Who? All right, so uh, Sami Zayn comes out. Apparently last week, Sami Zayn was cutting the promo about how awesome he is because he's an Intercontinental Champion, and Johnny Knoxville came back out and was actually like, oh, you suck, actually. So then Sami Zayn big booted him, right? Yeah. And Johnny Knoxville, because Johnny Knoxville is a crazy person, uh, not only had Sammy actually give him the big boot, but also, I guess, probably told Sammy, you kick me right in the fucking face as hard as possible, because he did. That's probably the most direct big boot I've ever seen. Okay, well, all right, next week's segment, right? I, okay, I, like, how, I, like, I, I like how Johnny Knoxville is just... Hey, John, they hired Johnny Knoxville because they, they fired Jeff Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, it's it's the one celebrity guest they can get who is going to know how to bump. Yeah. You know? True. So the, they have Sami Zayn come out, and it's going to be an Intercontinental Championship match between him and Ricochet. And from the beginning, I'm thinking, the fuck has Ricochet done to earn a title shot? He spent five weeks jobbing to Sheamus, then beat Sheamus once. So now he gets a title shot? What? Okay, sure, whatever. And it's, of course, going to this match. It's like, okay, well, Sammy's going to fucking stomp Ricochet because they're building up the WrestleMania match versus Knoxville. And while, I'm, while the thought is running through my head is, oh, my fucking God, they don't, he's not so stupid as to get, have the Intercontinental title get dropped to Johnny Knoxville, are they? Uh, either which way, those thoughts subsided once the match started. And, as always, I am uh, very surprised by Sammy's ability to, to adapt to the wrestler he's wrestling. Sammy wrestled a bit slower in a lot of the matches we've seen in the past couple months. But against Ricochet, Sammy is a very fast wrestler, and you kind of have to be because it's Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet continues to do moves that look like they hurt him more than the guy he's actually attacking. Nice. He did a, he did a crazy, like... Uh, handstand flip into, like, Spaceman Plonka onto old uh, Sammy. And it looked like Ricochet just dropped his own guts onto Sammy's shoulder as hard as possible, which is like, how's it? Oh, no, you slightly hurt Sammy's shoulders by rupturing all of your internal organs, Ricochet. Good work. I mean, here's the thing. If Ricochet breaks all, 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 of, his, all of his, um, freaking, uh, oh, I'm bloody hell, I'm forgetting the name of the bone. Uh... <laughs> The things that are on the spine, shit, the vertebrae, I think. Vertebrae. Maybe. Whatever. If he, if, if he breaks those, then he, then he can, he can, then freaking, like, he, he can, he can break his own skin and then injure Sammy in the process, in the shoulder, <laughs> with, with his, <laughs> with, with his bone that was sticking out. <laughs> I see. I see. Oh, man. Uh, it's also funny you mentioned the RVD selling earlier, because they had a, uh, Sammy did a sit-out powerbomb to Ricochet, and Ricochet, being a crazy person, decided to sell the sit-out powerbomb by not landing on his back, but landing on his shoulders. Nice. And I was, I saw that, and I was like, god damn, we nearly just watched a draws happen again. Yep. You moron. Either which way... Match goes on for a little bit, then Johnny Knoxville comes out. What the hell? Okay. Apparently they could pay to have him twice in a row. First time. And Johnny Knoxville comes out, and Sammy gets a little bit distracted, and Sammy, after getting distracted for a little bit, turns around, Ricochet suddenly hits him with a Hurricane Rana driver, which I guess is supposed to be Ricochet's finish now. 
either which way, it was a gorgeous Hurricane Rana driver because Ricochet is an incredible athlete. And an what what even is a Hurricane Rana driver? Is, is, is it just... Like, is it just a spike Rick and Rana? Yeah, pretty well. Uh, that's the it, it, spike Kirk and Rana is probably the more accurate name, but it's, I've always heard it referred to as the Hurricane Rana driver. I mean, that, that's probably its name. It's like, like the driver is is the thing that people usually refer to spike moves, more or less, from what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like Ricochet, crazy acrobat. So he jumps straight up onto Sammy's shoulders. No need to like lift himself or anything for that. He just jumps straight up there. Sammy, being a surprisingly good athlete, despite how flabby he is, does a perfect front flip to sell it and lands it properly on his head, which I hope Ricochet covered for him properly. And then, one, two, three, Ricochet is Intercontinental Champion. I mean, which, the on is, hand... is, Sammy's saying landed, on, he landed on, 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 on his head. At the same time, he knows so that jump back off, completely forgetting that he's right, that he's right, freaking, that he's fine. Right, right after, yeah. freaking, uh, right after getting pinned. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, Ricochet is now Intercontinental Champion, which on one hand makes sense. So now that the Intercontinental Championship isn't up for grabs with Johnny Knoxville. Yeah. On the other hand, we have just seen Ricochet get jobbed out for the last month or two to Sheamus and to a lesser degree, Ridge Holland. I mean, maybe, like, maybe this is, oh. maybe this is them doing a redemption arc for Ricochet and they would actually push him. I don't, I don't think they will, but you know, maybe, maybe they'll try. Well, well, generally speaking, the redemption arc shouldn't start with them getting a championship. It should end with it. I mean, they they could they could work it in, into a story where he where he feels he feels like he's he, he, he like he feels like it was a fluke, so he's trying to prove to himself yeah. that he he's actually worth it. I suppose so, but like, it, it dawns on me now. Did WWE have Ricochet job out to Sheamus and Ridge? For several weeks to try and test whether or not Ricochet would be willing to be a company man, and then they suddenly give him the title. Maybe are they so stupid as to be yes. so lacking in subtlety they just immediately do it? Yes, they maybe I could see it. Oh man, you man, know what? There's some crazy shit going on in wrestling these days. Yeah, I, I, I saw, I, I saw, I saw that, I saw that, saw that Ziggy is in NXT now. I'm, I'm sure, he, I'm sure he loves working in NXT now. Ziggler? Yeah. It's difficult to say with Ziggler. I could believe Ziggler being an egomaniac. At the same time, I could believe Ziggler wanting to go down and work with the younger guys. Especially because, let's be honest here, Ziggler's getting pretty old. He was around since the Spirit Squad. Yeah, that, that, that is true. But yeah, he, he's, he's challenging for the NXT title. Well, I do, I do appreciate them trying to make the NXT title by, big by having the other guys go down to try and get it. Though it does strike me as strange, like, that Ziggler makes a bit of sense because Ziggler can be in the same position Regal was in 10 years ago, where it's like, send down an older guy that everybody knows is talented and let him show the younger guys some ropes. The more strange ones are the times where they send down someone who's already been on the main roster for a while and isn't particularly old, like, say, Mandy Rose. Or better, Mandy yeah. Rose has been the, yeah, been the top heel of NXT's women division for about a year now, and it's like, yeah, but why? She was already on the main roster and not particularly bad to my awareness. And meanwhile, her tag partner, Sonya, is like th arguably the top heel of the women's division, bar Charlotte. So what the hell? Uh, that, that just like, uh, like the, I just like, like the idea of, of the freaking Vince sh shouting in, in the back. Send Ziggler to NXT. He needs to show, show them kids how to Shawn Michaels their cells. Their cells. That, that is true. That is true. Vince, because Vince is like, NXT is increasingly becoming Vince's idea of wrestling. So he probably is like, oh, I'm liking a lot of show here. There's not enough Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Send that Ziggler kid down there. No, first he's like, call, call Shawn. I'm going to send him to NXT. And then he doesn't pick up. Shit, send in Ziggler instead. I think Shawn is in charge of modern NXT. Ah. Uh. <laughs> did, he, did, he, did, he, did he take over from Hunter? I think he... Well, I don't think he fully did, because this is supposed to be mu very much Vince's baby more than anyone else's, but... Yeah, I think they kind of... I think Vince kind of did put it from Hunter to Sean. And what is the... When, 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 is the DX, when is the DX invasion? Well, <laughs> that, that... 
See, that would actually be cool, and he doesn't do cool anymore. Yeah, that's true. Uh, like, but I can... Tune in to the next to 3.0 with, 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 with Commissioner Road Dog Jesse James. No, D Road Dog was part of the Hunters NXT regime, and when they were get cycling out Hunter, they fired Road Dog. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so, I know. Oh, no. so, so now, oh, God, no, X Pac. The, the X X Pac. Well, the, the, the trouble is, X Pac's actually a fairly talented wrestler. So, so that's less but of yeah, a but... joke. Yeah. I really like how. At what point yeah. do we joke about they just bring in the skeleton of China? <laughs> no, no, no. They bring in the skeleton of Recruit. <sighs> well, that, that, that's much more logical. That's much more reasonable. Yeah. Alter alternatively, Hornswoggle. Oh, God. Right. Yeah, I forgot. And we're both leaving out the classic Voodoo Ken Mafia. Uh huh. I mean, we, we talked about them separately, at least. Mm. You know, my, my favorite part, my, 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 my favorite of the fun fact about, about, about S-Man, Billy, Billy James, whatever, Billy Gunn, that, they're, they're the same person. <laughs> anyway. Kip? You yeah. mean Kip James? <laughs> yeah, I, I got him by both of his names at the same time. Yeah. Oh, uh, but yeah. So, that my my favorite little fact, fact, fun fact about him is that apparently he appeared he appeared on, on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and his only role like, he appeared only twice, and his only role was getting dropped out. Like that, it was it was both of them that things were like uh, for whatever reason Buffy or whoever needs to needs to have a wrestling match or like th things things about them, them them having a wrestling match, and both of the times all he did was show up and get dropped out and then leave. <laughs> Did Billy Gunn play a vampire because they had Hunter play a vampire in Blade? Maybe. Huh. But, but then, like at that point, why would you? Why would you? Why would you not just hire Gangrel? Because <laughs> Gangrel's got his dick out. That's why. <laughs> True. Fangin' and bangin'. Oh, don't forget his gut. That's the three things Gangrel's always got out: his his cock, his fangs, and his big beer gut. I mean, like. I, I guess I, I I guess they could have hired freaking Edge then or Christian. <laughs> well, Edge will get his cock out, but not in the places you want him to. <laughs> only when only when he's left alone with your wife. Yeah. Uh, either either which way. Yeah. The uh, last segment that I actually bothered to watch was they had uh, Rick Boogs and Shinsky start to do their usual routine. Which I found very amusing. Shinsky seems entirely nonplussed by the fact that he dropped the Intercontinental title a couple weeks ago. And he's just back to doing the for the kiddies routine of, all right, start the guitar, play it on the way out, yada, yada, yada. It was funny. My sister asked, do you think that Rick Boogs actually brings in his own personal guitars for these segments? The Usos then come in and fuck up uh, Boogs and Shinsky from behind, and start clobbering them, and... Uh, Boogs had to take a bump pretty well on top of his guitar. Nice. And then promptly my sister said, okay, so yeah, she, he probably didn't take out his own guitar for this one. Yeah. <laughs> Al Capone died that day. The great thing is then the referees all come out and the tide of referees that they send out instead of security guards nowadays, which I think is kind of dumb. And they all just drag Boogs and Nakamura to the back to the gorilla position. But then Paul come out and they just go out to the center of the ring and they have a pro they cut a promo. And it's like, wait, is the idea here that the Usos just outright stole a promo slot from Nakamura and Boogs? Yeah. Did you just do that? I guess. You know, I wish like, I I just had I just had an actual idea for Shinsuke that they could actually make make him make do to make him a character. Shit. So what if they did? What if they did the like very old timey and sort of racist gimmick of Shinsuke cuts actual promos, but they they change the subtitles so it's dumb, and then have Shinsuke <laughs> have Shinsuke learn some some English, and then start cutting 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 uh, pro like I don't mean that Shinsuke should should learn you know perfect English, but get get Shinsuke some time off so he can learn learn some rudimentary English. Fuck, I changed those two around accidentally. So rudimentally, mentally, English. <laughs> anyway, 
So yeah. And then have him cut a promo on a freaking on a heel, and then have 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 them framed for doing it. That could actually that's a storyline. <laughs> that's an actual storyline for she's gonna be in. It begs a lot of questions. Yeah. I mean, like, I, like I'm, what? Yeah. The old Mark Henry uh, murdering the production guy for playing Orton's music. There was never really an explanation for why the production guy did play Orton's music. Yeah, that, that's why I'm saying it would be like they they could make it a thing where instead of an actual production guy, it's a heel that that's like I don't know, you know, like blackmailing the production or whatever. Yeah, it it would make for one fun segment, but I don't think you could make a gimmick of it. Yeah, I mean. It wouldn't be a long. Like, I don't. I don't think it. It could be a long lasting gimmick. I think it could be a short rivalry, like you know, like I yeah. don't. I don't know, two weeks, maybe three at most. Yeah. And one it's, that you could do without even having to fuck with the production stuff would be have one of the heels say that they speak Japanese and offer to work as an interpreter for Shinsky. And for a couple weeks, you have him going around and saying shit in Shinsky's name until finally one of the other wrestlers who does speak Japanese and is a face, like, I don't know, AJ comes in and says, hey, Shinsky, this guy's fucking with you. And then you'd have a little bit of a feud there, I think, without yeah. having to fuck with production, you know? Yeah, that's true. But the, the issue with both of these ideas is that they're, they're too good for modern WWE. <laughs> because it was, that is 100% it, true. It, 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 would require, it would require them to not fucking waste most of their talent. Uh, all right. Either way, yeah. Uh, so the Usos came out and stole a segment, which I think is hilarious. But if that is a, if that is a rule backstage in WWE, one that makes no sense. Two heels should do it more often. Could you could you imagine how fucking great it would be if there is you know some mid card heel dipshit in the Attitude Era came out to cut a promo? Austin just comes out on the mic, says, "There's my promo slot now." Stunners him, then carries on with the promo like normal. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he, each each week this each week this this happens, but every every time all, all, it, it it takes longer for Austin to dispatch of the guy because he just keeps getting more brutal. Yeah, it, it ends in an actual hardcore match that's not non sanctioned. Not sanctioned. <laughs> Eventually, the guy just dares to even touch a mic, and Austin's prepared the concerto. Yeah. Uh, either which way, uh. Yeah, they had Roman and Paul come out and cut a little promo. Paul's so good at being a slime ball. Roman really needs to just try and stay calm and cool during his promos because when Roman tries to get excited and hyped up during his promos, he starts to look like he's just aping Cena, which is not good. Uh, Cena was Cena. Cena could do Cena's things, but Roman needs to maintain that cool, calm, collected badass attitude. I mean, the, the thing with that too is that like even Cena was hated for doing Cena things after a while. Yeah. Unless that is that is unless, that unless is Roman is suddenly true, unless so Roman is closer. suddenly doing un, un, unless Roman is suddenly doing the freaking the Tuganomics gimmick. <laughs> that would be fun to see someone do a parody gimmick for one day, but yeah. maybe not. Uh, maybe not Roman. Uh, and I, feel, I feel like Seth Rollins could the, do that. Pro. It, it it's difficult to say. I think Rollins. I don't think Rollins can work for comedy like that. I think Rollins is one of the wrestlers who kind of needs to stay serious. I mean, but, yeah. On the other hand, like it, I, I guess he just comes off as too too close to Waluigi for me to be be like, yeah, he he couldn't freaking act 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 fake gangster as a joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so after they cut that little promo, Roman and uh, Paul go back to the back, and then Usos stay in the ring, and I guess it's supposed to be a match. At which point I go, oh, so the rest of the show is just Usos then. All right, fuck this. I just went over, turned off the TV, and went. that was it. Nice. Don't care. Don't give a shit. But what if you turn off the TV and the, and the Usos started, started doing, doing a freaking... Uh, uh... Like live live reading of Go the Fuck to Sleep. Well, both of the Usos are largely just charismaless puds, so it'd be like watching a librarian read it. Uh, either but way. Do you remember when they did yes. the Hot Pinder entrance? <laughs> the, the what? Isn't that the name of the dance? 
Oh, right, when they used to do the little war dance type thing. Yeah. There, there would have been a neat idea there, but, I mean, for one, like... They didn't do anything like, with you it. Remember, well, for one thing, they didn't do anything with it, yes. For another thing, anytime they tried to make the Usos do a wild Samoans gimmick, you remember for that little bit in TNA where they had Samoa Joe come out with a fake face tattoo and had, like, crazy fire dancers come with him? I know, because I didn't, I didn't watch TNA, but yeah. Fair enough. And it was very, very dumb because, like, well, Samoa Joe's like Samoa Joe is Samoan, yes, but like the guy's clearly, you know, not that. He's working an MMA fighter gimmick. For all intents and purposes, yeah. Samoa Joe was always an MMA fighter. The guy was trained by Boss Fucking Rutten, you know. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. Like the Vault Samoan's gimmick can can work for people who are like who have a sort of pride in that and can also channel that pride properly. Because I don't doubt that I don't doubt doubt that uh, that the Usos or Samoa Joe are proud of being Samoan. At the same time, Samoa Joe works as works as like an asshole who kick your ass more or less. And the freaking the, the Usos are too. I don't even know what to call them. Like they're too vanilla. <laughs> they're, they're too like well, the, boring. The Usos are very bland. Yeah. And as strange as it may sound, the the Usos. In terms of how they behave, and their accents, and what general vernacular they tend to use, are not ethnically, but in terms of behavior, a lot more African American than they are Samoan. I thought you were going to call them white, and I would have agreed. Well, <laughs> well yes, a little bit of that too. But, like, the thing is... They can have the Usos do little wild small bits as a send up to family members, and that's fine, right? Yeah. But if they have the Usos or Roman even pretend to do the wild small gimmick, like as an actual, like even partly gimmick, it doesn't work because the Usos very clearly are, you know, hip hop kind of guys and alcoholics. And Roman Reigns is, you know, also not a wild Samoan. He is Mr. Calm and Cool, Slick Badass, you know? Yeah. Like, it, it's it's a little bit of a thing of just the, the company evolving and also our culture evolving. That the Wild Samoan gimmick in general just ha would have a harder time working nowadays because, let's be honest, it was always a little bit racist. Yeah. But, like, especially in particular, that nowadays a wrestler coming in who is of a non-white ethnicity does not have to base their gimmick around the fact they aren't white. Yeah. Like, apparently, I remember a freaking, while doing research for, um, because my mom had to do a presentation on gypsies. Apparently, there, there is a wrestler in NXT who is a gypsy, which is weird to me. I bet you there's lots of them. It's just that we've never really noticed. Americans, Americans don't think about that very often. America, most Americans would be confused by the idea that there is a Romani ethnicity at all they would just think it's a lifestyle and even then they don't have a problem with it yeah there it's it's probably one of the biggest cultural just points of like absolutely lack of understanding yeah but i mean a, it, it I also has it also has weird nuances because like the, i can actually explain uh because of doing that research i can actually explain why why i call romani gypsy uh, primarily which is in in the Hungarian uh, region because it's, it's a regional thing apparently. In the Hungarian region, the the different um I guess like I don't know what to call them the groups the different group, groups of um gypsies that that settled. Out of all of them, there's a group that's usually used as like uh what's the word like I guess demeaningly or something like you know they're yeah. they're, they're like if if a if a gypsy wants to uh insult you. By calling you by calling you a gypsy, more or less, they call upon upon that that group's name, and that group is the, is pretty much exclusively the only group who also insists insists that they call they be called Roma. So, being called Roma or Romani, which yeah whatever, being being called Rom Romani in in the, in the Hungarian region, is usually not uh, considered something that you actually want not not, not something that you want to enforce because. Or some people even take offense to it, because then it, that means that they are associated with that group. Yeah. Like if you if you want to really get get into it, like technically, 
like even even just the the kind of gypsy I am has its own name, which is I I believe Romungro, and that that literally just means Hungarian gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like that there has been actually some cool culture clash even over here just because of this because a couple of years ago uh freaking the prime minister wanted to ban all use of the word gypsy like they he he was like if you want to call uh gypsies by their ethnicity ethnicity you can refer to them as either romani or g you cannot say the whole whole world and he was going to enforce this with law with, with fines the whole comment section for the announcement was filled with gypsies telling him to go fuck himself, more or less. And, and the law never yeah. passed. Because of the backlash from, from the gypsy community. Yeah. So that, that was an interesting happening. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, there's probably lots of American wrestlers who have been part gypsy and it just wasn't remarked upon because, you know, here in the States, it's not really something people... Like... Yeah, about- both both in the states and in 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 the UK, from what I understand, like there are ethnically Romani people, but more- I've heard some British people lose their fucking shit about gypsies. Yeah, but th- that's the thing. So, but but both in America and and in the UK, there's up, also apparently the, the white people who live like gypsies, who call them who who don't like calling themselves gypsies. They call themselves travelers, I think, and. I don't understand, like, I, okay, it's a thing where, like, it's my culture, so I don't understand why the fuck you would want to, to live in it, because I don't even like my culture that much. Like, there's, there's certainly parts of it that are shit. Like, did you know that? Well, in America, did, yeah. in America, it's very romanticized. I, and, and, of course, in England, they usually blame them for everything, but in America, like, that was always thought of as a very romantic idea, go run off with the traveling circus. No, that, that, that part is fine, but there's so many nuances to the, to the culture that, that just suck, and, and it's good that, like, that, that my mom decided to cut um, tradition in our family, because there's things like, um, in gypsy culture, I mean, I don't know how, how uh, widely this is still done, but apparently it is still done in some circles. But in gypsy culture, at least, okay, that actually, yeah, that's, that may also be regional. I don't fucking know. This is, like, this is very complex, and I also don't have sources from all over the fucking world, because we're everywhere. But, you know. So, um, the freaking, one of the cultural things is that um, kids are supposed to marry around, like, age 15. Like, you're, yeah, that's... It's, it's like old monar- monarchy in that pe- people, like, uh, in, in that the, the, the parents agree to, to marry their children and that, that's what happens regardless of anything else yep uh, yeah that sounds like a lot of old traditional cultures yes yeah that, that's fucked and apparently it's still practiced I don't, I don't I practice and I don't, I don't like that like there's there's parts of gypsy culture that are great or like you know even, even if not great at least they're, they're you know they're not any worse than, than most other co- cultures that part no that part is bad yeah. Yep. That uh yeah, that that one is also an odd one. Like and sometimes like I don't know how it is in uh Europe or specifically Hungary, but like in America like despite the fact that that would be illegal in most situations, our government also makes upset exceptions for it in some cases. Like there are sometimes Muslim kids who are married at like, you know, 10 or something and that's just considered acceptable. Because they're Muslim, I guess, which is uh, just odd. Yeah, that's like you know, it's a thing where like that may be a really religious thing, and I I guess you may you may be able to justify it enough. I don't know, I don't know enough, enough about the that religion to to make a, a proper comment. Well, I guess part of the question also comes in saying like, well, technically, even if they're married, they might not be engaged in you know sexual relations, which I think is part of what probably makes it uh, separate. Yeah, I I think it's yeah I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's just you know it's not proper marriage it's the it's the legal part of marriage with without the other without the other parts or look well, yeah living together for a lot of those old cultures that's the important part not the sexual part it's the cult it's the legal part of marriage that's always important for a lot of those old cult- uh, older yeah. traditional cultures yeah yeah but but the the reason it, it is not present in my family is because um. That actually kind of, kind of ties into um into an earlier topic, I guess. So I'm I'm sorry for bringing it back up. 
But so one of the reasons that uh, my mom specifically uh, doesn't think or, you know, uh, freaking, how do I put this? The question, question questions me saying that I'm ace is because, because she was still, uh, like my grandma still did things more pretty traditionally, like not, not completely, but she was still forced into marry at a young age. Not, not, not as young as you would do traditionally, but still. And so, uh, she had, she got, um, <laughs> she, she had a pretty bad experience and that's, that's why she herself is sex repulsed. And she thinks that, 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 that she, because, because she is the way she is because of her experiences. That, 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 that's why, um, freaking, I, I also may, I also am or whatever, which like, eh, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I feel... that's not really like something that can be hereditary, but negative experiences and traumatic memories are not hereditary. Oh no, it's, it's not that she thinks that be, because of the, because, because of she, because she's like sex repulsed, we were, we were raised pretty sex negative. And so she thinks that it's just that, that I'm not AC, I'm just sex negative because, because of how she raised, raised me. I mean, some people come up very rep repressed and come out very, 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 very sexual. Like it, I don't think there's any hard and fast formula about it, dare I say. Yeah. Uh, either which way, I believe we can probably call that a podcast. Yeah. You want to say, uh... Hey, it's a wonderful kind of day. I don't, I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Yeah? It ain't easy being green. No, it's not. I'm, Bye. I'm Mr. Bright.